unchanged with Louis Thomas, Stephen James, Ryan Kellogg, and Pascal Devaric. In the midfield, we have Jad Arslan, Logan Lucas, Sebastian Garcia Herreros, and Kevin Morris. And then in a more attacking-minded midfield position, Luca Barberis, along with Rashawn Larmon, one of the other big key players to watch on the other side in terms of the goalie position is the man you saw right there pick up the ball, the red shirt sophomore from Illinois, Conrad Jedjits, a former Mountaineer who spent two years with this program, didn't see any game action, so made the transfer over to DeKalb. And again, that bad blood angle just continuing to thicken a little bit here between these two programs as we are underway here in the Mid-American Conference opener for both sides. A small league, the Mid-American Conference is, so when you're talking about this, you're talking about a single round robin and 15 points available. Coaches will talk about it all the time, winning at home. You know, West Virginia needs three points at home, quite honestly. Northern Illinois would be very happy with one point and a draw here today. Early on, potential opportunity for West Virginia working up the end line. Garcia Herreros, nice ball sent in. Larmon nearly got on the end of it. My apologies, that was Barbaris who had the setup pass. Sent back into the attacking third by Stephen James. Barbaris gets it and will drop back for Logan Lucas. He'll swing it wide for Louis Thomas. Our officiating crew for the evening, our head referee Ian Gutt, assistant referees Will Cassidy and Paul Diverse, and our fourth official Ryan Maines. Yeah, Barbaris getting the start today was very active. Last time out we liked his energy and, and so far um, a good run there, uh, getting things started. Larmont almost getting on the end of that. So when you count Luca Barbaris, that would be two Mountaineers making their first starts of the year. Again, including Steven Tekeski in goal for WVU, hoping he won't be tested all that much with the way this back line has played throughout most of the season. Morris with it. He'll send a low shot goalward, and that one wide. Looks like a corner kick that will result after a deflection. Yeah, particularly in college soccer, when you get when you get to have a lot of subs, um, you know, Barbaris has, has been in and out of the lineup, you know, throughout games, but it's Tekeski who's really kind of uh, in, in a new situation here tonight. Off the corner, Arslan will send it near the top of the 18. Headed back to Ryan Kellogg. Kevin Morris will give chase toward the near sideline. It is great to see Ryan Kellogg back out there. The last time we saw him on the pitch, he was the recipient of some very hard contact that left him, it looked, dazed and confused. But a very vital part of what West Virginia does on both sides of the ball. And like I said, great to see him back out there for the Mountaineers. West Virginia so far on that left side trying to send some balls to the near post and, and almost getting some touches on him, but uh, attacking that left flank and sending them in. Nice low dro driving balls to that near post. See if that continues or if it's just the way West Virginia is going to start and then maybe mix it up on how they approach crossing the ball in there. We, of course, welcome those of you who were watching the conclusion of action out at Amon G. Carter Stadium. Tough loss for the football team here this evening in what has been a somewhat crazy day in the Big 12. We'll run down some scores coming up at halftime. Wide open header opportunity. One hops its way into the hands of Tekeski. That was off of the coconut of Jan Mertens, leading scorer for NIU. Mertens is all by himself there. West Virginia has to clean that up. Center back's got a little bit stretched there, and Mertens was by himself. Really uh, kind of easing Tekeski into this game, though, because he headed it right to him. That's what I was going to say. Does that help him build confidence getting an early save like that? Doesn't hurt. Quickly on the other end, Barbaris with a cross to the top of the 18. Arslan will swipe in with a crazy strong shot. That one, though, punched wide by Jedgets. What a great job by Arslan to get his hips around that ball to get it on frame well almost literally on frame I guess um, not sure if Judge it's got the save on that or if it went and hit the hit the post either way um, you know Arzen's tra tracking back and then to get his hips around get such power on that shot very impressive 
WVU coming into this matchup with a record of six wins, three losses, and two draws. Again, a two-game losing skid with the losses you mentioned, Adam, to Pitt and Pacific. Northern Illinois comes in with a record of three wins and seven losses. Might not seem like all that great of a record, but something to consider. One of those wins was against Nebraska-Omaha, who's a team that has looked very impressive on the national scale this year. And for a program that has not had a tremendous amount of success, they've already improved their win total from last year, so they've got confidence. And a win like this in the Mid-American Conference opener could go a long way for this Husky team. Yeah, Ryan Swan in his first year at Drury. It's inter or from Drury, which is a Division II school. And you see um, several coaches having success from the Division II level at the Division I level. It kind of tells you that there's really not that much difference in terms of uh, maybe of some talent, but in terms of your recruiting approach and, and, and the game. Um, you know, Coach Craig Stewart at, at Providence has gone to a couple of Final Fours. Um, Chris Grassi, who had a lot of success at the University of Charleston, now at Marshall. Um, and you just see Division II coaches. Uh, Coach Jordan that we saw at Pacific, mm -hmm. uh, you know, was had a successful career at Cal Baptist Division II. So not a whole lot of difference, I think, when you take over a program from two to one, unlike other sports where it's a completely different world. His ninth year overall as a head coach, 109 wins. Just about the same as his counterpart on the opposite sideline in Marlon LeBlanc. His 12th year as the head man here in Morgantown. A record of 111 wins, 81 defeats, and 30 draws. We already have one Mid-American Conference opener in the books, and it was... A clash of early season titans in the league with Western Michigan and Akron doing battle. Broncos outlasted the Zips. one nothing in that game. Western Michigan playing without its starting keeper in Drew Shepard, who was the recipient of a very, very tough injury in a midweek game against Michigan State. So that just shows what's on deck as far as Mid-American Conference games go, and certainly that illustrates the point you were saying earlier, Adam, how important it is to get wins like this and certainly at home. Yeah, Akron almost annually is the favorite going into it and to see them kind of at the bottom, even though Western Michigan certainly is very good this year. You know, Akron's got their work cut out for, for them, you know, just a, a few more games left. You start and you're almost done. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to get behind the eight ball early. And West Virginia trying to avoid that tonight here at home, again, trying to protect home and get three points here at Dick DeLess Soccer Stadium. On a beautiful night in Morgantown, no less, we have been treated to some summer-like temperatures here in the opening week of October, which makes the cynic in me wonder what it's gonna look like in February, but we'll enjoy it while it lasts. And, of course, for those of you who are enjoying this one, wherever you may be, we thank you for joining us on WVUSports.com. Including this matchup, the men's program will play five of the next six games here at home. Two of them against teams currently ranked in the top 15 in the coaches' poll. Michigan State, the next one. Matchup. I think I speak for you, Adam. We are both very much looking forward to. The Spartans have been one of the most impressive programs nationally here this season. A defensive power that uh, from time to time seems to resemble a brick wall. Minus that game against the Akron Zips. Yeah, watching that Akron looked super impressive. So it just, I mean, it tells you about what's going on in the Mid-American Conference that Western Michigan was able to get a victory over them. NIU in the attacking third. Ball played back for Max Voss. He'll swing one near side for Sheridan Smith, the freshman. Fires it upper right 90 to Keski. Just makes sure that it sails up over the crossbar, which it does. So we're a little over nine minutes into our opening half. Both sides have really had one good chance. Keepers have handled both. Though the one taken by WVU forced 
A little bit more of a effort on the save from the NIU keeper and Jedgets. Rashawn Lermond around his defender will send one in. Ball rolls out to Logan Lucas, fires from distance, and that one deflects on its way through. Second corner of the match coming up for the Mountaineers. Again, West Virginia able to get on that left flank. That one closer to the six there. Northern Illinois doing a good job on defense of creating some problems there and some traffic. <clears throat> but the Mountaineers are in the corner. Arslan will take it. Just a bit too tall for Stephen James on the six. Kellogg comes in for a rebound attempt, and that's cleared all the way back to the midfield stripe where Sebastian Garcia Herreros will run it down. A lot of numbers forward for WVU as this ball played in. James heads it. Top of the 18, Larmond will play it for Arslan. He was a little flat-footed, but not a bad idea from Rashawn Larmond. Yeah, West Virginia off that corner, trying to send that ball in as it was back. Went back to the midfield. White shirt still up front. And uh, I think the best opportunity there was Stephen James perhaps on, on that header, trying to maybe get it, not it down to Larmond. Just couldn't quite get it cleanly but uh, a pretty good sequence there for West Virginia goal kick ultimately ends up with WVU we already mentioned one Husky player with ties to the Mountaineer program the other is number 12 Noe Ochoa his brother Alex Ochoa key contributor for WVU in two years with the program Recorded seven assists before transferring out of the program after his two years here. Once again, just adding another layer to an already close series between these two teams. This will be the seventh all-time meeting between these two. Northern Illinois holds the series lead at three wins, two losses, and one draw. WVU is unbeaten at home, though against NIU with a 2-0 record. They'd love to continue to defend the home field turf against these Huskies. Lucas was trying to find Garcia Herreros, ultimately headed back, though, to Jedgets. The interesting side note on that series history, Adam, Going all the way back to 2012, which would have been the first year these two teams met, once in the regular season and once in the Mid-American Tournament. WVU has technically not trailed NIU by any time on the clock. The only time they ultimately trailed was the double overtime defeat a year ago. It doesn't technically count as game time. So apart from those first two meetings, the Mountaineers have never played from behind against the Huskies. And the only time they did was a golden goal. I wonder if that one hurts maybe even more, mm -hmm. though, you know, because, yeah, they didn't trail in the game, but they've trailed for 365 days, you yeah, know, until, that's true. until this meeting here tonight. Uh, West Virginia, though, starting out uh, pretty well. I I'd like to see them, you know, continue to take some chances going forward. Um, Northern Illinois hasn't shown a whole lot uh, in the attack just yet, so I'd make them kind of prove it and uh, take some chances going forward. You see Ryan Kellogg a couple of times pushing up. I think it's safe to say you can tell these two teams know each other relatively well. This is a much more wide open game than we've seen in other games this year. Yeah, and I think more open than when we've seen Northern Illinois before as well. Um, kind of a grinded out defensive game. I don't see them necessarily packing in right now um that just don't think they've had a whole lot of the ball i don't i don't see them though just uh, trying to to be defensive and park the bus in front of the goal freshman kevin morris some good one touch passing larmond's though a bit too far arslan able to deflect one back larmond wins it briefly but the huskies able to clear devarch steps up to slow that clearance attempt it's been mostly lived on the offensive half thus far for WVU. NIU has had a chance or two, though, on the offensive side of things. 
as we approach a quarter of an hour gone here in our opening half. Lots of space for Ryan Kellogg. He'll send a low cross in. Centering it up, Lucas will fire one well wide of the mark. Deflected on its way by, though. And that'll result in the third Mountaineer corner. Yeah, see the redirection there. Uh, West Virginia is getting that space on the flanks and being able to cross the ball in. It's just uh, hoping for a little bit more quality on the cross and, and a finish. Short corner. Lots of space on the end line. As this one flicked up, Larmond, no. James there. Morris will fire a shot. That's deflected. Kellogg ends up with it. Sends one right off the chest of our head referee. And the Huskies with numbers could potentially try to mount a counter here. Attempt at switching the field, headed back by Louis Thomas. Kevin Rodriguez will play one into the 18, and Tekeski comes out for it, doesn't get it. Ball's still alive, and he's well off his line. Great job, though, by his defense to at least stay a dangerous situation. Tekeski is a freshman from Missouri. Again, has only seen game time in two matches previous to tonight against the Terriers of UMBC and in the second half against the Pitt Panthers. Perhaps the right there showing a little bit of his inexperience, but luckily he's got a pretty solid back line that was able to get rid of that dangerous situation. Yeah, the communication was there between the back line and Tekeski, but execution of getting that ball, if you got to go get it, you got to get on it, and you got to gobble it up and, and just kind of roll on it there for a second and be sure. Free kick in the attacking third for the Huskies, Max Voss, the junior from Germany, will send it in. Headed back into the 18 by a Mountaineer and ultimately cleared to the top of the 18. A shot attempt will go wide. I believe that was Devarich who got in there on the initial contact in the 18. He was up against Luke Reed, senior from England. Yeah, it looked like Reed had a step on him, but Devarich was able to recover and get there and, and get, that, uh, get his head on the ball and allow West Virginia to have some time to defend once, it, once he popped that ball in the air. NIU again on the offensive side. Kevin Rodriguez, former Mid-American Conference freshman of the year. Now it's Max Voss. Great job by Arslan to come up from behind him and jar that one loose. Larmond will give chase as it rolls over the near side touchline. That was another dangerous situation, though, from the Huskies, and good to see Arslan getting back on the defensive end. Yeah, you know, sometimes fans will watch and kind of think that, you know, those four, the back four, and the goalkeeper are the defense. When, when Northern Illinois has the ball, everybody's on defense. Something that might be perhaps a bit of strategy from WVU. You noticed as Rodriguez was working his way into the 18 a few moments ago, a number of white shirts around him. He can be dangerous from distance. Scored his first goal of the year last time out in a 3-2 setback against Valparaiso. That goal was scored from about 30 yards away from the goal. So something to keep an eye on for number nine. One of the interesting side notes about this Northern Illinois team, I guess you could call them the cardiac canines, if you will, Adam. They like to play, or I, I guess they don't like to play. They do relatively well when the game goes longer than 90 minutes. In overtime games this season, 2-0-0. Six of their last nine wins have come in overtime. Four of them in double overtime. Obviously, the one against WVU a year ago. We're hoping that won't be the case here tonight. 
but something to keep in mind with this Husky team that, again, the record doesn't always indicate they're the sort of national powers we're going to see to conclude the regular season, but they've definitely got the firepower out there. Yeah, and when you come into a match as, you know, a relative underdog, which I would think it's fair to say that uh, Northern Illinois is in, in this one tonight, uh, the longer the match goes even, the more confidence that the Huskies will have. I'm sure that's been the case in, in other matches. So, you know, it's up to West Virginia to take that confidence away, and I think they've had some opportunities, but, you know, all those chances don't mean much unless it turns into a goal. I think if we had to hand out some stars along hockey lines for the match tonight, I would probably give a few to defenders already. That was a great play by Pascal Devaric, realizing that Tekeski was sort of glued to the top of the 18, unsure what he should do. Devaric headed it back to him, so Steven could pick that ball up as opposed to play it by his feet. Every little bit of help they can provide the freshman is going to go a long way this evening. Logan Lucas wins it. Dangerous situation for WVU. Swings it for Morris. Morris finds Barbaris. Low cross in. Garcia Herreros was right there. It was just a step away from him. Louis Thomas now an opportunity. That one cleared right back to him. Back for Barbaris. Trying to get around the defense. He'll win another corner for the Mountaineers, number four of the match. Dan, what we're seeing West Virginia get all the way to the end line and send balls across, and what's happening is the ball's sending a, going away from the goal, so Mountaineer players who were onside are now going away from goal to try to track it. West Virginia might want to send a ball a little bit earlier on that flank to let players run on him. On the corner, Arslan has Jed Jets way off his line. A shot is blocked off of the boot of Devaric. A few red and black striped shirts were there to keep that one out. Jedjits went for it, just didn't get it. The Mountaineers have to be disappointed with that. That was a wide open net, and, and Northern Illinois was just able to throw some bodies in there and knock it down. Larmond. The offside flag is up. Just about halfway through our opening half. Still scoreless in the Mid-American Conference opener between WVU and NIU. And we mentioned football earlier. How about our trivia question for this match? On the gridiron, these two schools have met once back in 1986. That game is in the WVU record books. The question is, why? is that game in the WVU record books. We'll tell you, coming up in just a few moments. That game happened before I was born, so I can't pretend to say I saw it live. But perhaps some of our fan base did. Throw in, a monstrous throw in, well ahead for Rashawn Larmond. Throw in resulting. In the attacking third for the Mountaineers. Larmond with it. Deflects back to Garcia Herreros. Louis Thomas. Mountaineers need to switch field as NIU have made real estate a little sparse on that far sideline. Max Voss will drop for Noe Ochoa. That's the man we mentioned whose brother Alex Played two years, recorded seven assists in his Mountaineer career. Ryan Kellogg moving forward. Kellogg scored the last goal for WVU. A beauty second ball attempt in the final 30 seconds. And one nothing win against Dayton. And what was a very wide open game has now settled into the normal pattern we have seen in most of our men's soccer matchups this season. NIU now sitting back into a more defensive minded pose. Hey. 
Devaranch. On a backdoor run trying to find Garcia Herreros. Just a bit too tall for the sophomore from Florida. So we mentioned the one nothing win for Western Michigan against Akron earlier today. Have one other game currently, or uh, still going on later tonight. I think actually it'll kick in about a half an hour if memory serves. Bowling Green will be at the new member of the Mid-American Conference in SIU Edwardsville. Those will be the two road games in conference action for WVU. Anytime Akron falls in the conference opener, Adam, it's almost like there's blood in the water and everyone's just trying to fight to be the top man when it's all said and done. Absolutely, and, and West Virginia, you, you kind of alluded to it with some favorable matches here at home at Dick DeLess Soccer Stadium. And yeah, it, you know, anybody, anytime Akron fails to get three points, you think you got a, you think you got a chance. Christian Molina ahead for Max Voss. Off of Kevin Morris, it'll be the first corner of the evening for the Huskies. We've already seen that they can be pretty dangerous on set pieces. Had a header wide open in the early minutes of this match. Voss will do the honors for the Huskies. That one headed away with some force off the head of Luca Barberis. And it'll be a do-over for NIU. Take two. This one headed back into the frame and in to the goal. A Mountaineer and a Husky right there on the corner. That one just kind of had a weird angle to it as it went up and in. They'll credit that one more than likely to Jan Mertens, I believe, was the player. We'll get another replay angle here. Yep, Mertens was the closest Husky to the play as that one just sneaked inside the far post. And NIU takes the lead in the 27th minute of this match. Northern Illinois taking advantage of that set piece opportunity and really kind of a 50-50 a, a ball that just finds its way into the net. We kind of saw a ball like that last night in the in the women's game kind of up in the up in the air and I think it's going to fall harmlessly and then the next thing you know the, the net's rattling. Louis Thomas ahead for WVU. Looking for Larmond, a deflection off of an NIU defender. Necessitates a little more effort than would normally be needed from the netminder Jedgets. Well, there goes my streak of uh, zero clock time trailing <laughs> against NIU. Chuck that one up to the broadcaster, Jinx. Yep, I'll just, uh, I'll be pointing you out. Yep, to I'll, the, uh, I'll go wait in the car. <laughs> no dinner for you. <laughs> Still a lot of time left in this match, obviously. West Virginia, to be fair, has, has been the better side for most of the night. That Again, that doesn't count for a whole lot. There, there are no moral, moral victories out here. So West Virginia's got to work hard and get that ball in the back of the net. They've had the opportunities. They've kind of plotted the, the right strategy. They just need to stick with it. They just need to be patient. You know, uh, Stephen James sending that ball in so long, kind of hopeful, optimistic. Maybe be a little bit more patient. I'd like to see some quick passing through the midfield, some some one-two combination passing, but I, w I would like to see an early ball crossed in there rather than getting to that end line and kind of sending it across. Seems like players have been moving away from the net, trying to get to the end of it, trying to send it a little earlier where players have an opportunity to run on it. The official score credits that one to Max Voss as far as the goal goes. 
think we'll have to take a look back at the replay for that one. But as it stands, still a goal in the box score. The first of the evening as the Huskies hold the 1-0 advantage over the Mountaineers. Arslan sending one for Larmond. That's really for Northern Illinois to sort out, I guess, uh, to some degree. Right now, the only thing that matters is that it's one nothing. West Virginia trying to figure out a way to get uh, equal in this match. Like I said, uh, you know they've, they've been playing well. Just looking for that breakthrough. You know, some good opportunities over the last couple of matches. Just haven't gone, gone in, and uh, you know West Virginia needs to kind of just kind of crack one and hope hope that the floodgates open. Arslan near sideline for Kellogg. And we'll get a free kick. The advantage was the initial call, and then after Kellogg lost possession, we went back to the initial foul on Arslan. And to piggyback off of what you were saying, scoring goals is not easy. No. Finishing is certainly the most difficult part of scoring goals. See if WVU can finish on one here. Kellogg send one far post. Devarich is there. And it was just wide. Yeah, looking for Devarich here. Some contact there. Able to get a little bit on it, but just not enough. But uh, going back to that point, I mean, some teams, when you watch them play and maybe they're struggling to score, they're having trouble getting the ball and getting, you know, just trying to get forward. That's not been the case with West Virginia. They've got the ball. They're getting into some dangerous spots. It's it's that last element, which is, you know, oh, by the way, the hardest and the most important. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's kind of a difficult it, – it's difficult. So, But, you know, if, if they weren't getting the ball and getting those chances, that's a whole different set of problems. But uh, – uh, you know, and, th and you're further away really from kind of, you know, solving it um, ultimately. So West Virginia just has to keep getting, just keep, you know, to use the old Greg Schiano, uh, keep chopping, just keep <laughs> going after it. Sometimes they do come in spurts. I'll use the U.S. men's national team as an example there with the display they put on last night. Morris will send one top of the 18, headed on by Arslan. Larmond will give chase. Just couldn't put it on the goal. We've seen a couple of moments where Conrad Jedjits has been out of position. One of them was a point-blank try that was deflected off of at least a pair of Huskies. So that's got to at least give or leave a little bit of optimism on that Mountaineer sideline. Yeah, I think there's probably a lot of optimism for West Virginia because there have been so many chances. And, you know, Larmon there, it's, isn't it interesting how sometimes luck kind of plays into it and you don't want to leave it up to luck. But, you know, kind of a fortunate bounce for Northern Illinois puts them up one nothing. And if, if Larmon's touch is just a little bit lighter and he can get to that second touch as he was right across the – the face of the goal, maybe he's able to do something with it, maybe lay it off and put one in, in the back of the net. But uh, as it stands, the touch was a little heavy and uh, over the line and a goal kick for Northern Illinois. You know, it, as long as West Virginia can keep pressing, you know, it's, it is the old cliche. It's a cliche because it's true. You make your own luck. So if you can keep at it, keep creating chances, you know, fortune will go your way. Not sure if that was a Fleetwood Mac reference or. Again, you give you give my intelligent my intellect way too much credit. I can stop. If <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the only that's the only time that that happens. <laughs> so I'll take it. <laughs> why you and I are going to talk a lot in the offseason. Uh -huh. Let's get a Mountaineer substitution coming up here at the next available stoppage. As Spencer Myers is standing by. Pascal Devarich will send one high into the night sky here at Dick Delesque Soccer Stadium. 
And we will get that substitution as Jad Arslan will come out in favor of Myers, the freshman from PA. Since I mentioned it, I did get a chance to see the highlights of that uh, Team USA win. That first goal from, how do you say his name, Pulisic? Yes, I, I, went, I went back after we were kind of keeping an eye on it in here. I did, I did go back and watch the first half, and I, I may have snoozed a little bit in the second half with the result kind of in hand. But, um, you know, it's just like while well, everybody thought, you know, Pulisic has lost his magic, uh, Altidore can't score anymore, and, and, and all of a sudden it came in buckets, and so you're kind of hoping that something happens like that for West Virginia. Myers with it now in the 18. Forced out of the penalty area, so he'll drop it for Kellogg. This is where West Virginia needs to play a little bit quicker, I think. Kellogg looking for space. He'll have to swing it for the co-captain, Stephen James. Ahead for his fellow captain in Louis Thomas, and his cross cleared away. What impressed me about that Pulisic goal is his first touch on his run. He has to basically extend his left leg a good 90-degree angle from his body in a full-speed run just to keep it alive on top of the finishing move that he then puts on to score the goal. Yeah, talk about it at a close angle. Um, Got it! But uh, I think that's what people don't understand, how incredible that touch, that first touch is and how difficult it is. That's, that's among, among the many differences, that's probably number one, that first touch that can just be so magical and deadly. Over the near sideline, we'll get a substitution, and that'll give us a moment to answer our trivia question. These two schools have met once on the gridiron back in the 1986 season. That matchup between Mountaineers and Huskies is in the WVU record book for the longest play from scrimmage in Mountaineer football history. A 96-yard touchdown run from Pat Randolph at the end of the third quarter the longest run in WVU history and now tied for the longest play overall from scrimmage. If you knew that one, good on you, because it happened, uh, what, about 30 years ago now? Over 30 years ago. You'd think in all the history there'd been a, a play from the one, right? Well, and you'd think, too, with the talent that the football program's had over the last 15 years, kind of surprising that the longest play from scrimmage didn't involve Noel Devine, Steve Slayton, yeah. Tavon. Yeah. Explosive play and offenses developing and, yeah. and evolving and things like that. Yeah, you, can, you can see somebody trying to sell out on, an, on, a, on the one-yard line and just all of a sudden, you know, they're gone. But... I think the second longest run was uh, Noel Devine. That was actually against my alma mater. Uh, my, my first trip to Morgantown, actually, when they did basically sell out on the defensive side. He ripped off a 92-yard touchdown run. Fun times. Not that you remember <laughs> or are bitter at all. Garcia Herreros will tee one up. And Rashawn Larmon finds the response WVU needed. 38th minute goal for the junior, his first of the season. It paid off. West Virginia had been knocking on the door. And a, and a really good run there to send that ball in. West Virginia had a couple of white shirts there, just outnumbered Northern Illinois in the box. Larmon gets on the end of it. He's been close, and he puts this one away. Just a really good ball. Oh, through the defender's legs. Yeah, there were a couple of good balls there. One to Barbaros and then for Garcia Herreros and then through to Larmon. Yeah, Louis Thomas to Garcia Herreros and then the feed into Rashawn Larmond. That's huge. And, and you know, I, I kind of watch these things. I'm sure you do too, Dan. You know, the, the reaction by West Virginia. Getting the ball out of the back of the net. Larmon didn't want to celebrate. Pushing his teammates away. Rushing back to midfield. Let's get going again. Let's go get another. Can they do it here? And you saw a little bit on the camera angle there as Larmon got back toward midfield. Garcia Herreros does the wrap a finger sort of motion of just like, that was good. We need to keep get some more. Need to keep it up. 
But it's exactly what WVU needed here in the waning minutes of our first half. Assists there to Garcia Herreros and Louis Thomas. That'll be the fourth of the year for Garcia Herreros and the second of the season for the senior Thomas. Yeah, sometimes a double assist can be tough to spot. That one was pretty easy to spot. Thomas, really, really well-weighted pass in there to Garcia Herreros, and then Garcia Herreros, man, threads that one. The old nutmeg. Fitting as we approach the holiday season. That was a bad joke, I'm sorry. You, you, you're really stretching <laughs> yeah. to get to the holiday season. <laughs> Uh, ha Halloween's a, ho uh, well, is a holiday, right? To quote that you counts. from last night, hey, Christmas is here That's right. and it's gone. That's right. That's right. <laughs> We're almost Halloween, almost Thanksgiving, <laughs> Christmas is right around the corner. And I'm paying taxes. What happened to the time? <laughs> yep. We approach five minutes to go in our opening half. 1-1 one, one the score. Official stats uh, reporting that that first NIU goal, technically an own goal off of WVU. As it stands, though, not really important right now as we are back to even. Good run forward for WVU. Cleared, though, back toward midfield. I wondered if that might be the ultimate result because usually you can tell who the goal scorer is when the celebration happens, and I think Northern Illinois was even a little caught off guard at the ball went in the back of the net, so it's kind of hard to pinpoint a single player. Obviously, it was kind of a 50-50 ball, um, so not... Uh, not really surprised that that's the ultimate decision, of course, at this point. Was a little bit of an excuse me score. I think everyone was a little in, in shock when it happened, but certainly wasn't the case when Rashawn Larmond found the, the uh, equalizer for the Mountaineers. And that's, West, that's the way West Virginia had been playing, you know, through the first 10, 15 minutes, getting, getting wide and then sending that ball in and and then finally the, the finish was there, it was, and it was set up by a great pass, a great sequence of passes. Logan Lucas will feed one for Ryan Kellogg. Sophomore keeps it in. Now for the freshman, Spencer Myers. Tries to center it for Morris, taken back, though, by the Huskies. Noah Brody. Brody will drop for Sheridan Smith. Plays a long one ahead. Ultimately played all the way back to Tekeski, uh, excuse me, after Christian Molina, the sophomore from Katy, Texas, was running around up top for Northern Illinois. It's a young NIU team. Half of the roster underclassmen. 23 of the team's 37 points scored by freshmen or sophomores. They've been withstanding a lot of pressure from these Mountaineers, certainly after the first goal of the evening went in. Now we're knotted at one after the response from, uh, from excuse me, Rashawn Larmond. Three minutes left in our opening half. Morris back for Devaric. Freshman Kevin Morris centers it up for Lucas. He'll swing it near side. Myers back for Kellogg. Morris to the top of the 18. This one headed back over the end line, and it'll result in another corner, number five of this half for the Golden Blue. That was almost a Novocaine offense, kind of lulled uh, the Huskies to sleep a little bit there. Myers will take the corner. And it's cleared easily off the foot of Giovanni Garcia. Garcia Herreros back to Giovanni Garcia. 
Kevin Rodriguez fighting through. We'll push forward for the Huskies, trying to split a double team. Cannot get past Louis Thomas, though we will win a throw-in in the attacking third. Yeah, a couple of those balls, West Virginia really needed to send deeper towards the Northern Illinois net there. Um, but uh, NIU was able to get a turnover and go forward quickly. And Rodriguez is very dangerous with the ball. You don't want him coming at you with a full head of steam. Molina drops for Noe Ochoa. He sends one top of the 18. Tekeski comes out and punches that one. Might have got a piece of the man up top for NIU and Noah Brody, junior from Arizona. Brody seems to be okay. Though the trainer will certainly go out to confirm that fact with a minute to go here in our first half. I think you always have to be careful, and I think the official is very careful in dealing with potential head injuries and the contact. Far be it from me to, to debate how, how serious it was, but it, it looked like it was a, on the second. It looked like Tukeski got the ball and then got the player, and uh, thankful to see him up and kind of you know, going through the protocols there with the trainer. So 44 minutes in, we've seen now two career first starts for Mountaineer freshman Kevin Morris and Steven Tukeski. How would you rate the pair of them? We've seen a lot from Morris so far this season. Tukeski, though, in his first time in goal, apart from being fooled by one that seemed to fool everyone in the stadium, seems that they've done relatively well. Yeah, I've, I've liked what we've seen from Morris. He's, he's been involved in some plays. He's, he's made some, some mistakes, but uh, his effort and his work rate has, has definitely been there. He's a dynamic player, and Tukeski, a, a few shaky moments, but uh, you know, decisive coming out on that, and uh, and uh, you know, got the ball. That's the most important thing. He was able to get that away. If you're going to go and you're going to come that far off your line, you better win. And he was able to. So, and I think his communication with the back line has been good as good as well. So, that seems to be a strong part so far. Might be called on again as the Huskies push forward. Mertens plays one all the way across goal mouth. Rodriguez wins it for NIU. Fires, deflects up and over the crossbar. It'll be a corner kick. Number three of the evening for NIU as the clock runs down under 30 seconds to go. Christian Molina will do the honors. Ball in the air with 10 seconds left in the half. This one headed on frame, but headed away off the near post. It was a great job by Sebastian Garcia Herreros to get it. Another one sent in on frame, and Tukeski will make the save as an uneasy first half comes to an end. An own goal in the 27th minute, but West Virginia responds. Rashawn Larmond off of a save. Ball in the back of the net um, after some good possession, and so if West Virginia can convert and take those chances as well. I think they've done everything they need to do defensively here tonight. And so unless Northern Illinois changes something dramatically and puts more pressure on that West Virginia back line into Keski, it's all about trying to, to do the opposite to Northern Illinois. Put pressure on, get that nice touch and nice class finish in that final third and try to walk away here with three points. Uh, West Virginia, I think, has had the better of the play for the most of this game so far. Uh, but unfortunately right now it's it's – tied at one so West Virginia feeling like they deserve better now that they've got to go earn it starting 11 back out for Marlon LeBlanc's team and as you mentioned that was the big story coming into the matchup first career start for freshman Steven Tekeski in between the pipes in that first half did record a save for the Mountaineers that own goal wasn't really uh, much on him we saw a replay during halftime of that goal. It was just what looked like an attempted clearance of a header that just sort of bounded and bent its way into a tough spot, into the side netting. But something that is firmly in the rearview mirror after the response from Rashawn Larmond, and we're hoping that might spark him a little bit as he struggled to find the back of the net this season for WVU. Yeah, he's worked hard tonight, not just 
you know, on the offensive end. But, you know, when you're the striker up there, you're, you have to be kind of chasing chasing the ball up there, trying to put some def pressure on the defenders, and he's done that. He has worked hard here tonight. He's done a nice job. Free kick in the attacking half for the Mountaineers. Kellogg across, deflected down, and ultimately cleared by the Huskies. Will go the long ball approach to Jan Mertens, leading scorer for NIU. Four goals and an assist on the year. He's a transfer from Marquette University up in Milwaukee. One of a few international talents on this NIU roster for first year head coach Ryan Swan. James sends ahead for Thomas. It's headed back. Barbaris was there. Ultimately, it's sent back to the midfield stripe for Stephen James. Morris making his first career start for Jad Arslan. Arslan trying to get on that right foot. Tripped. No, come, uh, no call after the contact in the penalty area. He was very quick to find some room. Quickly ahead, he'll find a header opportunity on the back door. Larmond was there, keeps it in play. Sends back for Ryan Kellogg. Lucas. Nearside Kevin Morris. Freshman with some space. He'll send nearside for Garcia Herrero's cross in. Larmond there. Headed, or excuse me, punched back to the top of the 18. And Logan Lucas will send that one well off into the distance here at Dick Delesque Soccer Stadium. A couple of good looks there from the Mountaineers. Yeah, definitely. And just before that sequence, Arslan had a really nice run and got his head on one but wasn't able to put it on frame. Morris had some space there, declined to take it, laid it off, leading to that cross. You see him be a little more assertive if the space is given to him. Yeah, and, and again, before that, Arslan was on a good run of his own with the ball at his feet, running at Northern Illinois defenders. He's got to make sure he, he fights as hard as he can to stay on his feet. Huskies ahead on the other end. Mertens will give chase. And it will result in a corner as it deflected off of the co-captain, Stephen James. Five minutes gone in our second half. 1-1 one, one score in the Mid-American Conference opener. Max Voss, the junior, sends this one in, and it's headed away by James. Rodriguez will attempt another cross. This one popped up, and Tukeski will bat it over the end line. A corner kick will result, but I don't mind that play given the deflection that took place for NIU's goal earlier. Absolutely. Be 100% sure. Absolutely. I was thinking the same thing. You know, he's probably got a sense that he's got that post covered, but just in case, you know. Foss on another corner attempt. This one headed back up to the 18. Rodriguez slips on a shot attempt, and it ultimately ends up being cleared. I think that was James who got the header on it for the Mountaineers. From our angle, it was lucky that he did because Luke Reed, the senior, was right there. Right behind him, awaiting that one. Had James not gotten to it, it might have been an easy look on goal for the senior for NIU. WVU trying to get something going on the offensive side. Luca Barbaris. Also getting the start here tonight for WVU. Right, right, right. 
That would be the third of the year for Barbaris. Near sideline. Back for Morris. Logan Lucas trying to feed it ahead for Ryan Kellogg. That one skips a little bit on the somewhat dewy turf and will result in a goal kick. I've seen a few players from Northern Illinois slip in some moments here recently. As the night's gone on, obviously the dew increases on the turf and slot ball slides a little bit. You just have to be aware of it and adjust to it. That Tekeski clearance was almost in a dangerous uh, situation there for WVU. Now ball near sideline with Kevin Rodriguez. Into the 18, Rodriguez could not get past the final defender for a shot. Ball flung to the top of the 18. Barbaris will win it and draw a free kick. So we mentioned it's seventh all-time meeting between these two teams. NIU holds the series lead at 3-2-1. West Virginia 2-0 at home. Two very different games played here at Dick Dulesque Soccer Stadium. The first was a 4-0 win for the Mountaineers, who scored their first three goals in the span of a little over six minutes. Two years ago, three goals were scored in the final four minutes of the match for West Virginia to come away with a 3-2 win. We're even in this one in the 54th minute. Ball bends for Jad Arslan. Into the 18, Arslan around one defender, now around two will fire, and that one deflected. I think that hit a defender in the back of the head after a great run from the senior Arslan. Yeah, this is what you like to see him fighting off the defender, staying on his feet, trying to get that shot on. It was a good shot. A lot of pace on it, obviously. Someone's going to have a mark tomorrow. And a fan might as well after a deflection up into the stands. I think we have a pretty decent crowd for a beautiful night here in Morgantown. Given the fact that this game essentially kicked off right as football went final earlier today. Enjoying some beautiful weather here in our final stretch of the regular season. The season comes and goes so quickly. Men's soccer will have four more home games following this and then before you know it, we're pretty much to the Mid-American Conference Tournament. Header from James goes wide, just ensuring that that was not going to be a dangerous opportunity for NIU. The corner kick will result. Once again, the West Virginia defense getting stretched a little bit there. James has to head that ball away, almost dangerous. We almost had a second own goal. He was probably a little bit more sure of it than I think I was, but uh, so that's that's better. That's the way you want it. Corner number five of the evening for NIU. Voss will send it in. Devaric got just enough of it to send it out of the penalty area. Kevin Rodriguez trying to get around Barbaris. Will chip one up. Back door. Ball still loose in the 18 after a clearance attempt comes off the outside of a foot. And an unsettled situation finally settled. At least momentarily by Pascal Devaric, who almost out of frustration just says, let's just get it out of here. Frustration, a little bit of desperation there. Some sustained offensive possession for NIU. It's been somewhat rare in this match. The Huskies have certainly had their chances, but it hasn't been 
the length of possession like this. Over the top. The flag is up. Thankfully for the Mountaineers at Voss, as Voss had gotten in behind that back line. That was awfully close. I thought he might have timed it. Well, it's tough to see on that one, of course. But uh, West Virginia fortunate. That call goes their way. Didn't really see a ton of argument from either Voss or the NIU bench. Meaning they either realized the futility of an argument or they probably agreed with the far side assistant ref. Either way, play continues. Twelve and a half minutes in to our second half. Knotted at one. Louis Thomas. Back for Garcia Herreros. He skies one. Jedjit's well off his line. Almost does a split landing after he punched one up over the head of Jad Arslan. Great job from Barbaras to win it in the attacking third for WVU. It'll result in a throw-in deep in the attacking zone for the Mountaineers. Larmond. Clearance attempt. Blocked by Kellogg. Larmond's got it in the 18. Crosses around a defender and will result in a goal kick as he made a shot attempt there that hit a Husky defender and came off of him again on its way out. That was a heads-up play. I think that was Luke Reed, the senior, who got in there. And I, I kind of like that run there from Lormond, taking it on it by himself there, trying to make that challenge. I think that was a good decision to go for it that way. Uh, Reed just made the better play there. Starting to see a little bit more confidence, perhaps, from the junior, Rashawn Lermond. He was the go-to man up front for the Mountaineers early on in the year. As the season has gone on, head coach Marlon LeBlanc has kind of morphed his lineup around a little bit. Could this be the shot in the arm that the junior from Philly needs? to really take over as that true number nine for WVU. Arslan. Taps one ahead for Logan Lucas, who rolls over a tackle and is a bit slow to get up as that one played all the way back to the freshman keeper, Tekeski. Long ball near sideline, it's Garcia Herreros. Low cross, and it's cleared for a throw in. Another throw in coming up for WVU. It's kind of interesting to note that some of the key players we have seen this season for the Mountaineers have not seen any time, and we really haven't seen too many substitutions by either side. Now, a little over an hour into our match. That's just a couple of players to spell towards the end of the first half. And then back to the starters here in the second half. More a traditional look. I know soccer purists hate the substitution rule in college. I have to understand why it's there because of all the games and you're playing in a short amount of time. It's uh, kind of need that, that rule to salvage health. But uh, from a purist standpoint, they love the strategic nature of the three subs, and I get it. But we've seen a little bit more of a classic matchup in that way here tonight so far. Mm -hmm. Hard contact right near the center circle. Pascal Devaric came through for a hard tackle. The follow through laid out Max Voss. The foul was called as a result, it appears, against the Mountaineers. I think general logic on this is that possession is nine-tenths of the law. Mm -hmm. Devaric yep. won the ball, but it was a lot of contact behind that one. Yeah. Oh, 
I almost thought that incident there would have been the foul on Morris rather than Devaric, but uh, we did get a booking for this, it appears as well. We'll have to wait and see who that was on. I would imagine it probably is Devaric. Dangerous situation here for NIU. Our official stat says it's actually the captain, Stephen James. So maybe while we were stuck watching the monitor, perhaps a, a little descent took place. Yeah, a little descent there, perhaps. Either way, play will continue here in a few moments. Voss sends it in, but Morris is there to head it away, and a lot of space for the Mountaineers to work in. Garcia Herreros early cross, looking for Larmond. Jedjits was there. He lets it roll on by and has to run it down, barely keeping it in that far corner of the 18. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want Rashawn Larmond bearing down on me under any circumstance. That ball almost had like a little bit of top spin on it when it hit the top of the 18, and he does a good job of using his body to get there, but that's a real dangerous play. What do we say all the time? you got to be sure, and uh, he got caught a little bit in no man's land but made up for it. On the other end, the Huskies trying to take advantage. Cross in from Rodriguez will be headed out by Kellogg, and a corner will result. Voss will make his way to that far corner flag. This will be attempt number seven as far as corner kicks go for Northern Illinois. Boss, his attempt, a monstrous swipe there from Rodriguez. A long shot attempt on a putback opportunity from Sheridan Smith, and that one well over the crossbar. Thank you for joining us here on WVUSports.com. This is the final game for us this weekend. Women's soccer will take on Oklahoma tomorrow. That's on Fox Sports regional coverage here in the Morgantown in Pittsburgh area. You can catch that on AT&T Sportsnet, formerly Root Sports. And then we'll be back with you Wednesday night when Michigan State is in town. That's a 7 o'clock kick. Spartans, one of the top defenses in the nation. Be the second meeting all time between WVU and MSU. Another great opportunity for the Mountaineers trying to kind of do two things at once here. Build that uh, RPI and, and tournament resume if it comes to it and also want to win the conference outright here in Mid-American play. Garcia Herreros cross in. Arslan was there. It's headed wide of the 18 and run down by Barbaras, who will play back for Kellogg. Ryan Kellogg from distance. Will put a lot of distance on that shot. That was an interesting discussion that took place before we came on the air, talking about, I'm sorry, I just saw a score update there from <laughs> Mid-American Did I read that right? 71 to 68? In seven overtimes. That's, I think that helped inflate wow. the score. I for a minute there, I'm like, I didn't. Basketball season hasn't started yet, mm -hmm. has it? Uh, the discussion that took place before the game: uh, How many at-large teams could potentially the Mid-American Conference get in? You would think that a team like an Akron is always in that discussion. Western Michigan has put together a heck of a resume here in the non-conference. WVU has done some decent work in that area. Now, obviously, the record doesn't quite reflect that and some of the bigger games haven't gone the way the Mountaineers would have liked. But do you think it's possible that the Mac could get three teams in? Absolutely. I, I do think that's possible. Um, it, you know, it will be interesting because it could come down to tournaments just like basketball where, you know, you're watching some of the, the conferences that are going to get one bid or have, a, have had a good 
single team, and then a, a Cinderella comes and wins the tournament. So you're wondering, will that bit, will that league get two, two bids, and does that take away from from our league? And um, so it'll be interesting to come down to it. Still a lot of work left to be done here, and you wanna you wanna just not leave it into anybody's hands. You wanna go out and take care of business earn your way in and don't leave it up to any committee or numbers and RPI and strength of schedule. Just go out and the only number that, you know, really matters if you have more goals than the team you're playing. Mm -hmm. So far in this one, not the case as we are knotted at one. Just about the midway point of our second half. Garcia Herrera central centers, excuse me, for Kevin Morris. Sends it ahead. A bicycle kick clearance there from NIU. Smith drops back for Christian Molina. Molina one of two Huskies with a career point against WVU. Actually had a goal and an assist. Set up that game winner in double overtime against these Mountaineers a year ago. Lots of real estate out there for Garcia Herreros. For Louis Thomas. Foul called and a free kick coming up for WVU. Real dangerous spot here. Kind of a tough call, both players going for it. Thomas draws the foul there. Not as many offensive chances for West Virginia here in this second half through 20 minutes as we had in the first. I felt like really carried the carried the play in that first half. Not so much here in the second half, been, been much more even, although the scoring opportunity is probably still favoring West Virginia overall. Kellogg sends it in. Devarich was there on the back post, but Jedjic just puts his hands up and watches that one go out for a goal kick. Just about 20 minutes left in our second half. Mid-American Conference opener for the Mountaineers and the Huskies. WVU's lone goal, the first of the year from Rashawn Larmond, who is eagerly pushing forward from time to time looking for a second. WVU back in possession. James for Morris. Lucas, a bit out of his reach though. Molina will send forward for Mertens. Back to Christian Molina. Molina sends it in. And that one headed away easily by the co-captain James. Kevin Rodriguez, dangerous from distance. We'll line one up on the right foot. And that one bends wide, but just serving as a reminder how much power he can put on a shot from range. That one missed by just a few feet. Now he's the real deal. He's been really good on the ball, running at West Virginia players. Also, you know, as you saw there, creating some space for himself and getting a, a really powerful shot off. He has been uh, very impressive. He, he more on the near side. Uh, from our vantage point, and Molina on the other side has been uh, impressive and dangerous for the Huskies tonight as well. Devarch right to that center circle for Morris, and now near sideline, Louis Thomas. On a full sprint, he plays ahead for Luca Barberis, who can't quite get to it before it goes over the end line. WVU at this point in the season looking to finish what was a very strong start. Best start for the program since the 2006 season, which was a Big East championship year and a run to the NCAA tournament. They had a strong start to the year as well last year. 
But it was at this point where things started to get kind of tough, and West Virginia down the stretch ended up dropping six of eight. Now, one of the wins was a very impressive road win against Akron. The Mountaineers would love to put together a consistent finish to the year. And so far, a little under 20 minutes to go in this one. Still knotted at one. Got a stoppage there for just the second Mountaineer substitution of the evening as redshirt freshman Brendan Hogan came in. That's kind of what you were talking about, the international game. You're making your second sub in the 71st minute. It'll be interesting to see if we see some more players kind of come in, maybe check back out, check out and check back in uh, as uh, that Lermont that came off. Um, you know, he's been active. Fatigue sets in as well. Um, but I think you hit the nail right on the head when you talk about consistency and, can, and, and having that strong finish, you know, bringing it night in and night out. It's so difficult with the schedule that West Virginia plays. You know, down the stretch, we're talking about a really important game here tonight against Northern Illinois, and then you just, you know, roll out of bed on Wednesday and you're facing, you know, one of the top teams in the country in a non-conference game against Michigan State, and that's just kind of the way that it's gone for West Virginia. But, again, every challenge is an opportunity. And, uh, you know, West Virginia's certainly got plenty of those. Obviously the Mountaineers hoping to head into that big matchup on Wednesday with a win here in the conference opener. Poorly timed giveaway. Foul against Morris will result in a free kick for NIU. As you can start to see both sides, the physicality of this rivalry starting to come to bear here. 73rd minute. We're knotted at one. Max Voss, the junior from Herten, Germany. Another German there in Pascal Devaric. Headed it back, headed forward by the senior Jad Arslan, trying to get around the defender. Arslan will win a free kick. If that's not senior experience, I don't know what is. Up against three Huskies, he manages to win a free kick for WVU. That was a great head there by Arslan and, and almost got on the end of it, but Northern Illinois was forced to foul. Louis Thomas, a little bit frustrated that that ball unable to connect with Luca Barbaris. We're going to get another Mountaineer substitution. And while we're crossing off firsts for the season, with the first career starts for Steven Tekeski and Luca Barbaris. How about a first appearance for freshman Cade Remy? Hails from Johnstown, Ohio, which is actually not far from my old stomping grounds, just northeast of Columbus. Brief stoppage here as Jan Mertens perhaps might be cramping the way it looks. We've got a West Virginia player down as well. Oh, Barbaris over on that far side. He might be suffering from a similar ailment as we look at the trainer's work on him. Yeah, he went out trying to chase that ball down and uh, went to the ground as he slipped. I'm not sure if it is a cramp or if he maybe extended himself there. Something we do take for granted. It's a very, very warm night in October. You're to the meat of the season at this point. These guys are giving it their all. And as we mentioned, total for both sides. We've only had five substitutions in 74 minutes of game action. Martins, I think it's safe to say, was a cramp as he's up there still working on Barbaris. It does, look, it does look like similar. You know, we hate to speculate on injury, but he, he is up and moving as well. His lat leg extended. It certainly looks like a cramp as well. But, you know, this this game's just, just dying for a for a hero, isn't it? You know, we've got a bunch of storylines and new players and 
firsts and, and, and moments, and, you know, all kinds of opportunities to, you know, to create a, a memorable moment in, in, in a big spot here for West Virginia, you know, not just for the three points, but this season, we talked about it in the opening. This is West Virginia is going through a little bit of a tough time here, and they need something to turn the tide of this season. They need a big moment, a big play from a big player. So someone's going to have to step up here for the Mountaineers to come away with a victory tonight. This is this right now. This stretch here is, is you know it's kind of the definition of adversity. You got to you got to turn it around. Louis Thomas trying to get the ball out of a dangerous situation. He'll win a free kick in the defensive third. Not only is this game begging for a hero, it might be begging for a uh, brief discussion from our head referee as things have gotten a little interesting between both sides. Clearly illustrating how much each wants a victory. Yeah, getting desperate moments here. Everybody's trying to kind of sell out and give up your body. Sometimes that has some contact. You kind of alluded to the bad blood. I haven't seen, you know, there's been a little bit of push and shove, but I think it's more the competition and, and what's at stake rather than ill will. Anything that you know beyond what's natural when when you're wa both wanting the same thing. Louis Thomas, and for Brendan Hogan, that's sent and bends its way down that near sideline. Somehow managed to stay in play. 76th minute, we're knotted at one. Garcia Herreros back for Louis Thomas. Quick cross in. Headed by Arslan. Just wide. Good look from Jad. Didn't miss by much. Now, isn't it amazing how often Jad Arslan gets open in these situations? You know, given his height, now he didn't have to go uh, leave his feet to get that. But even when he does, he, he's, he finds the ball. He gets to it really well. Unfortunate not to get on the end of that. West Virginia right now is is wanting to play on that. They want to start that attack on that on that flank right now. It seems to be that right side. Um, so we'll see if, if that continues or, or if at some point they maybe try and play through the middle of the pitch. But uh, creating some opportunities, but, you know, they're almost very deliberate in saying we are going to want to go down this right flank. Back line, it's Tavarich. Ahead for Kevin Morris. NIU will win possession back. She had over 13 minutes to go here in regulation. Overtime is one thing you do not want up against these Huskies. Ball sent ahead. The co-captain Stephen James not even risking it with freshman keeper Stephen Tekeski getting the start tonight. Tavares will sky this one up. We'll get a stoppage as Logan Lucas is down for the Mountaineers. Looks like that might have been an elbow there. Again, you have to be really careful when it comes to a player's head in all sports these days, and uh, the referee does a nice job of recognizing that. Good sportsmanship there too, shown. I make sure I, he's okay. The fatigue factor seems to be slowly setting in. During that timeout, we had a number of different players stretching. You can kind of see Chad Arslan pulling at his toes a little bit. It's an unseasonably warm night here in October in Morgantown. 
Yeah, it's from our from my spot here. It's perfect weather. You know, it's not too hot. It's not too cold. But of course, you know, these players run six and seven and eight miles here tonight, so they have a different opinion than I do. Um, but it, you know, it is it is warm. It was 84, I think, when I pulled in, and I don't think it's dropped a whole lot. You know, even when the sun's gone down. So, you know, high 70s here. And uh, a couple of players going down with cramping when, when we had that other stoppage. All players getting water and lots of it and all over their bodies and heads and trying to stay cool. I was going to say, speak for yourself. I think I'm a little sweaty here. It might, it might increase as this game gets a little <laughs> yeah, more right. tense down the stretch. I'm working hard tonight. Let me know if we need a trainer. I'll call for him. <laughs> I'll take the Gatorade bottle if we get a break here. Ahead for Arslan. The senior attempts to split two defenders. A clearance attempt comes right off of his chest. Huskies will recover, though, as Rodriguez brings it into the attacking half. A lot of room for Kevin Rodriguez, who you can clearly see wants to get on that right foot. Good job by Louis Thomas to take away his options. Max Voss with it now. And Stephen James will take care of business after Morris slowed Voss down. Seventy ninth minute on a warm night here at Dick Delesk Soccer Stadium. Own goal in the twenty seventh minute, the equalizer off of the foot of Rashawn Lermond, who will get ready to sub back in for WVU at the next available opportunity. West Virginia out shooting NIU, essentially a two to one margin, thirteen to six in terms of shots, but the big key shots on goal as it was in the first half, 2-2. Morris near side, Garcia Herreros. Back for Thomas. You'd almost call this the equivalent of a zone defense a little bit from the Huskies who are sitting back. Flung ahead, Thomas will give chase, manages to earn a corner. Fought all the way to the end line and deflected that one out of bounds. Off of Luke Reed, it'll be the sixth corner of the evening for WVU, and we'll get those substitutions as Lermond will come in, along with the freshman Spencer Myers. Yeah, Arslan is actually going to take that corner, and I think he's coming off uh, to get a little bit of a breather here. 80th minute, Myers. Low corner cleared easily. Long one ahead. One man back for WVU. It's Garcia Herreros. Rodriguez on his back as he'll turn and just send it all the way across the midfield strike. That's terrific composure there by Garcia Herreros. You know, Rodriguez, most dangerous player. Nice move from Rashawn Larmon. Contact and no call, but a nice little heel tap in between his legs set him up beautifully. About 25 yards out from the goal. A terrific amount of skill. Unfortunate. A little bit of contact there. Coach LeBlanc definitely one of the foul called. Didn't come. Mountaineers begging for a switch of field. Clearly they like something on this near sideline. It did produce the Mountaineers goal this, tonight here. That same side. Corner coming up after Louis Thomas dribbled it off of Rodriguez. West Virginia is earning these corners, and you you want to make one payoff here. This will be the seventh tonight here for West Virginia. I think that's the right call, Northern Illinois, giving some some argument there. But uh, Cade Remy, who is uh, making his first appearance, will send it in. Larmon tried to flick it on. It's cleared back to Remy, who will watch it go over the near sideline for a throw-in. Played into Larmond. He will win a corner. Oh, goal kick, excuse me. Yeah, I agree. It looked like uh, West Virginia all thought they were going to get another corner there. Tough one, so. Goal kick here inside of 10 minutes left.
I'll go ahead and throw this stat out here, just illustrating how important it is for WVU to close this one out in the next eight minutes. Since the end of the 2013 season, NIU has played 11 overtime games. Their record in those games, 6-0-5. You do not want to go to extra time against these Huskies. And I think as this game's gone on, I'm not sure if it has to do with confidence. I think they've been a little bit better this second half. Um, but I think still, they're still playing for that counterattack, trying to get Rodriguez open. Um, while West Virginia has more have ha, has had more of a of a game plan of how they want to attack and dissect and creating opportunities. You know, Northern Illinois, I wouldn't say they've packed it in necessarily, but they've defended and then hoped for the counter. You know, maybe getting Rod Rodriguez running, maybe getting Molina out, out front, creating some opportunities, and they're stretching that defense out on a counterattack. Steven James already on a yellow card with a dangerous tackle. It wasn't anything malicious, but that being said, that's a dangerous play from the co-captain. Even more dangerous when you're on a yellow. That was a lot of, that was almost, that was pretty late there. Our head referee trying to take control of the situation there. He was talking to you, Dan. That's enough. <laughs> That's enough out of well, you. I'll go to the car again. <laughs> <laughs> Should have just kept it running. On the reset, here's Voss. Headed away by Morris. Freshman skying for it, a miscommunication. And Spencer Myers will win it for WVU. It's played back into the attacking third, though. And ultimately back to Myers. Miscommunications on both sides there in that series, and ultimately it results with an NIU throw-in. Seen a lot of players hitting, hitting the turf, whether it's selling out, trying to slide tackle, or slipping. A lot of players hitting the ground here and you know my thought is sometimes soccer is won not just by a great play but but by a misstep and a mistake and you know when when you're slipping sometimes that mistake can lead to you know lead to a goal for the other team it's a it's a different it's a different sport where you know mistakes are just so crucial you can be punished for just one and that can be the difference in the whole game there's not a whole lot of sports that are like that where one just one mistake could be the difference. Had a substitution for WVU a few moments ago. The freshman Cade Remy playing in his first action of the year, subbing out for the starter Luca Barbaris, who made his first start of the season here tonight. Shot from Lucas high and wide off in the direction of a beautiful moon off in the distance. Should have had that on Friday the 13th or something. Yeah. Ball played ahead. Larmon gives chase. And a heads up clearance there from Noe Ochoa. Jed Jits coming off of his line. He just said, We're not even going to risk it. Sent it over that far sideline. Yeah, so much goes into that play, that clearance as you talked about. And that's knowing where you are on the field, where that 18-yard box is, because Lamont is right on you. Your keeper's right there. Is he going to get to it? No, I'm just going to send it away. So a lot goes into that split-second decision, a lot of calculating and awareness, and a good job there uh, by Northern Illinois to, to clear that one away and stop that West Virginia attack because Rashawn Lamont is playing very, very assertive tonight, very dangerous. The lone goal scorer on the evening for WVU. Three minutes and change left in this one, at least in regulation. Long clearance ahead to Noah Brody. Good job by the freshman Morris to win it. Sends it ahead. Larmon with a head full of steam will apply some pressure, and it results in a clearance over the near sideline. Throw in the result for WVU. Larmon the recipient. Rashawn will drop. 
for Louis Thomas. Devarch. Looking for Kellogg, taken away by the Huskies. Three minutes to go. Molina, cross, headed away by Devarch. Throw in coming up for NIU. Devarch has had a nice night as well. Facing some pressure from Northern Illinois at moments, being sure with the headers and in the air, doing a nice job of cleaning up some of that. Ethan, Ethan Petrie, excuse me. Nice sidestep, we'll send one far post. Way too tall for the 5'4 sophomore and Christian Molina. Yeah, caught between, I think, a couple of ideas there. Getting on that right foot, almost wanting to shoot it and then kind of crossing it too, a little too, too strong there. Far sideline, it's Arslan. Two minutes and counting in regulation. Deflection. It ends up back with Jad. Looking for a shot attempt. It's batted down by Luke Reed. Ahead come the Huskies. Molina for Brody. Great job by DeVarch. Had the position and took the ball away. Good step here inside of two minutes. Anything now would certainly seem to be golden for sure. Under 90 seconds to go. Garcia Herreros for Luca Barberis. Into the 18, he'll send one far post, no one home. Clearance back to Ryan Kellogg. We approach one minute left in regulation. WVU has done it before in the final minute. Can they do it again? 60 seconds left on the clock as a goal kick coming up for NIU. Good sequence there for West Virginia, getting that run inside there and sending that ball across. Just not enough players in the box to get on the other end of it. Certainly think that, you know, with the time winding down, you perhaps taking, taking a chance there. Obviously, you don't want to be susceptible to a counter, but just push those numbers forward. Good ball ahead. Barbaris will run it down. 30 seconds to go. Luca cross in. Deflected down. Corner is the result. It's got to be taken quickly, though, as the clock is running. We approach 15 seconds left. Yeah, watch for this. this is going to be the last moment of this game. Barbaris, that one cleared away. One more attempt from Garcia Herreros, and that one headed away as well. And that's how 90 minutes comes to an end. Opportunities from both sides in the second half, but neither able to put one on frame. Uh, Coach LeBlanc uh, got into uh, one of his captains, Stephen James, you know, quite directly. Um, and it seems like they want to, you know, they, they have a plan of attack, and I think they need, he was really urging them to stick to that plan of attack. Um, and uh, uh, as we see uh, play get underway and also, you know, at one point he said, you know, the ball goes in and we were standing there watching. And I think that's kind of, uh, you know, what we were lamenting in the break was, was a couple of instances of ball get, getting crossed, not enough players in the box. And maybe West Virginia just a little bit slow there. So that was, that was uh, the essence in, in about uh, 40 seconds or less, I guess. But that talk took took the whole overtime. You know, you get five minutes between. He was he was with them the entire time in that huddle uh, with the instructions. So important for WVU to come away with points here this evening. Three is ideal. One, if you had to choose between a lesser of two evils, you'd take it. But you really want to defend home field with a win. The big key is, as we mentioned, late there in the second half, Northern Illinois has not lost an overtime game in five years. 6-0-5 oh, since the 2013 season in overtime matches. This is kind of, <laughs> that's, that's kind of incredible. Yeah. 
Um, you know, you, and you kind of think about the attitude right now. Northern Illinois would be thrilled with a point here tonight. I mean, do they want to win? Of course. But if this, end, if this game ends 1-1 one, 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 and they co go away with a point, they'll, they'll, they'll consider this a, a successful night. West Virginia, if it ends with a point, will be disappointed in that. You know, you're at home, you want three. So, you know, kind of your attitude is, is a little bit different. Louis Thomas trying to keep one alive on the attacking end for WVU. Ultimately, his contact there with Jan Mertens will win possession back for the Mountaineers. Yeah, three wins on the year for the Huskies. Two of them have come in overtime, and the one that wasn't in overtime was against a team that at the time was ranked 10th in the nation in Nebraska-Omaha. Call them the Cardiac Canines. And you hope with a big old almost full moon in the sky, too, that doesn't give them extra powers or <laughs> something to that effect. Early in uh, this uh, overtime session, we saw West Virginia once again trying to, you know, send Louis Thomas forward. Get on the attack. Thomas heads one down for Logan Lucas, who ultimately skies it. Throw in, though, for WVU on that far sideline. Morris plays to Thomas and then gets it back. Freshman with a good centering pass for Jad Arslan. The Huskies swarm around the senior. Clearance comes back to Kellogg. Lucas. Switching field at the perfect time. Soft touch into the 18. Garcia Herreros giving chase. And a throw in results, but I like that. That was a nice little series from WVU. Yeah, that was a really good touch there by Louis Thomas, too. Ball is wet and the grass is slick, and that was tough for him to time, and he did a nice job of chipping it in, just kind of hopeful. For, unfortunate for West Virginia, got sent away, but a, a, you know this is a good place to start your attack here on this throw in. Four minutes in and to the first overtime period, and it's the first time this evening we will see the freshman from Japan, Tsubasa Takata. That attack following the throw in short lived as the offside flag was up against Rashawn Larmond. Yeah, he came from an offside position to play that ball. Conrad Jedjits. Sends it forward for the Huskies. And after a series of headers, Ryan Kellogg steps up to win it. A foul will be called on a follow through from a long slide from Kellogg. Nothing malicious there, no. just a hustle play. Yeah, fair call, he, he got a little bit of it and then as he was sliding, got the player. That's a fair foul, because he did catch him, but certainly no malicious. Missing that. Uh, Northern Illinois gonna send Keeper forward to send this, maybe perhaps send a couple players forward. Jedgets chips one in for the top of the 18. Louis Thomas heads it away. And Subasa Takata was absolutely laid out. He might be unconscious. There's a lot of contact coming up after the fact, and this is probably going to be a straight red card. Wow. Absolutely. And it is. Yeah. And it is totally warranted. Giovanni Pacheco has been sent off a straight red card, leveling a shoulder, and now an assistant coach, maybe even the head coach for NIU, has been sent off as well. Or is that the player? The fourth official was having a heated discussion with our coaches here on the near sideline. And it is one of the assistant coaches who's been sent off as well. A lot of commotion here, a lot of things going on. Tempers are flaring, a lot of things going on. Uh, but really, first and foremost, you know, you're thinking about Takata down on the ground and motionless. This is a, you know, you just, your heart just sinks and everyone is 
a little bit heated. We've had two. We've had a player sent off with the red. We've had an assistant coach sent off with the red. So it's um, got a lot, lot to sort out here. This is the second straight game we've seen contact like this. And luckily, Ryan Kellogg came back to the team. You have to hope that the same is true for Takata. We did see his legs kick a little bit there, so that's at least a good sign. Because that, not only just because of the microphones we have, I could hear that through the headphones. That contact was so strong. And then we saw the fourth official clearly explain to, to the Northern Illinois bench that he was not playing the ball. That was the, uh, the genesis behind the red cars. We see the cart come out. It's really hard now for West Virginia. I mean, you're in the middle of this. Your thoughts are with your player. And we still have some time left in this match. It's hard to think about trying to win a game under these circumstances as you watch it again. Mm. That's the only replay we're going to show of that one, but I, and, and not to editorialize too much, you can't even make a claim in my mind that he was trying to play the ball. That was an explosive shoulder to Subasa Takata. He has impressed in his freshman run. When he signed with the Mountaineers, head coach Marlon LeBlanc said a fantastic young player. He excites, he energizes this team. We've certainly enjoyed what we've seen from him thus far this season. And right now we are just hoping for the best. After a full speed collision. Yeah, Dan, you, you were talking about that uh, injury in the Western Michigan, Michigan State game. And, uh, that, you know, that game was delayed for, you know, you said about 45 minutes mm -hmm. or so as, as the player was attended to, as the goalkeeper was attended to. It's really hard to go on. I mean, you're dealing with, uh, you know, at players, you're trying to talk about, you know, the importance of this game and everything. But at the same time, I mean, you, you know, you got one of your, your teammates down on the ground. You can hear a little bit of the discussion that's taking place between head coach Ryan Swan and our head referee talking about why the assistant coach was sent off. Basically saying he needs to keep proper conduct on the sideline. So as it stands, now that Takata is at least up and moving, they look like they've put a neck brace on him just to make sure that nothing is thrown out of whack there. Good to see him awake and, and unfortunately in a neck brace, but you know, when he was on the ground, you were afraid of uh, being unconscious. unconscious. And uh, so awake and alert is, uh, is, is some limbs moving is a good sign, but a really a scary, scary moment here at Dick Dulles Soccer Stadium. And getting a well-deserved round of applause as he's carted off the field. So let's try somehow to reset you on what's going on here with still about 15 minutes to go. Golden goal rule, obviously, in the overtime period. West Virginia is going to get a substitution as the sophomore transfer from the University of Charleston, Andrew Rulo, will come in, just his third appearance on the year. And from here on out for the final 14 minutes and 41 seconds, should there not be a golden goal, West Virginia will play with the man advantage. This happened in the Pacific game as well. West Virginia played with a man up and unfortunately was not able to take advantage of it and get a goal. On the reset, DeVarge plays it in. Headed to the top of the 18th shot from Garcia Herreros, blocked. Taken away but deflected right back on the attack. West Virginia with a lot of urgency right now. Garcia Herreros plays wide. Louis Thomas overruns the ball. It'll be a throw in on that far sideline. 
That's a stat that unfortunately has been a little bit of a blemish for the Mountaineers. They've played in three games this year with a man advantage following a red card. They have, as of yet, been unable to take advantage of it on the score, uh, on the scoreboard. Four minutes to go here in our first overtime period. Clearance attempt. Stamped down. Ball played back into the 18. Arslan finds Larmond, but Reed was right there to clear it. That one was a step away from maybe the game winner. James wide for Garcia Herreros. Sends it to the penalty mark. Rulo skies for it. Headed away, though. Kevin Rodriguez. Strong challenge from Stephen James, still playing on a yellow card. Louis Thomas able to win it on the far sideline. As three minutes remain in our opening overtime. Again, golden goal rule. First to score wins. If no one scores after 110 minutes, it'll go in the books as a draw. NIU back to the 2013 season has not lost an overtime game. Lucas back for the freshman Morris. Far sideline for Sebastian Garcia Herreros. Throw and ultimately results for the Mountaineers. Manages to bounce into the 18. Clearance attempt batted down, and this one will be sent deep over that far sideline. West Virginia really seeming like they're leaning on Louis Thomas and Garcia Herreras over there on that right side, trying to make something happen. Under two minutes to go. Lucas, Arslan tried to flick one ahead for Ryan Kellogg. He'll manage to deflect one out of bounds for an NIU throw in. Again, the man advantage for the Mountaineers after a straight red card. Can they take advantage in the overtime period? Under 90 seconds now in the first of two 10-minute extra time periods. Yeah, you see, we had some pushing and shoving after that, uh, that red card. It's tough for the referee to kind of get control of it, though. But I think the players have done a nice job of, of kind of controlling themselves as well. We haven't seen a whole lot of chippy plays, I think, since then. I was worried about that, some sort of... Uh, Retribution or feeling still kind of hurt and, and carrying over. And, and so far, I think the players have done a nice job of uh, showing some composure for both sides. Andrew Rulo, a lot of space for Garcia Herreros. Hard challenge won by NIU, but the ball picked up by Louis Thomas. Just about 30 seconds to go. Thomas centers for Logan Lucas. Lucas ahead for Arslan, gets it back, fires, deflected, and handled by Jedgets. Larmond was the man with the last touch for WVU. That wasn't a real clean look that he got, but he got something on it to send it forward, and uh, Jedgets does a nice job to get in front of that one. That was kind of a hectic play, and that's, you know, the, the, those are the kind of scrambled goals you, you need sometimes to win a game like this. Last at Jefford from the Huskies. Four knots. And one 10-minute overtime period left for WVU to pick up three points at home here in the Mid-American Conference opener. Pay playing with the man advantage, can the Mountaineers put one in the back of the net and walk away with a golden goal of victory. We're going to step aside for a brief break. Second overtime period on the way in a moment on WVU Sports. Hey, 100 minutes, not enough. As the swarm has broken out here at Dick Delesk Soccer Stadium, you can see the bugs in the lights on a warm October night here in Morgantown. MAC opener for both WVU and NIU. And it has been neck 
and neck. Ten minutes to decide a winner, or this one will go in the books as a draw. And as you mentioned, Adam, in these overtime games, we've seen so many of them. Sometimes it's just the lucky bounce. It's the garbage goal. Excuse me scores in this situation are as good as any. We say it in golf. There's no pictures on the scorecard. <laughs> So whatever, whatever it takes, however it, however it comes, as long as it comes. Boy, I wish uh, someone had told me that in my early golfing days. <laughs> shoulder to shoulder contact. Logan Lucas wins the battle there. Centers it up for Andrew Rulo. WVU playing with the man advantage after a straight red card about five minutes into our first overtime period. Back for Kevin Morris now. Nice cut from the freshman. He'll fire, and that one just missed the bend into the upper right 90. We haven't seen too many shot attempts from the freshman, but maybe we should see a few more. Yeah, they really threaded the needle there. I thought that was going to hit Rulo, and it avoided him and almost went in. That would have been one to remember for his career. Freshman making his third start here tonight. Doesn't even have a career point to his name. And we're going to get another booking here. Yellow card against Noah Brody, junior for delay. That one more for show at this stage of the game. After Brody kind of leveled Jad Arslan right before that too. Two minutes gone in our second overtime period. NIU in its last 11 overtime matches, a 6-0-5 record. WVU trying to protect home field and get a win to open league play. After the result we had earlier today, Western Michigan over Akron, we set it blood in the water. This is a wide open race for the Mid-American Conference. And WVU could really stand to get three points in the opening weekend. Contact, no call. Ball cleared back toward the center stripe for DeVarch. Now with the co-captain, Stephen James. Offside flag is up as he was trying to find Garcia Herreros. And Northern Illinois, I think, in this final 10 minutes is really just going to try and hang on more than they have uh, previously in this match. Down a man, West Virginia. Trying to get something going in the attack, but really Northern Illinois, again, would be thrilled with one point out of this, uh, probably heading into this match, and now, given the circumstances, would absolutely love it. Logan Lucas with it now. Six and a half minutes left in the ball game. Kevin Rodriguez. Pushing forward from Max Voss, an attempted give-and-go move. Ultimately played back to Steven Tekeski. Making his first career start in between the pipes for the Mountaineers. He's done well. Hasn't been tested too much. Garcia Herreros. Ahead for Louis Thomas, a give-and-go move. He'll cross one in. Header. And a shot attempt from Arslan just missed. Rashawn Larmond was there on the front post. Just couldn't get enough for header opportunity. Arslan swept in out of nowhere. And almost got the golden goal. Didn't that sequence look a lot like that first goal when you talk about the play between Louis Thomas and Garcia Herreros and sending that ball in the... You know, the cross was a little bit different, but uh, that, that sequence, and I think that's what West Virginia's been looking for all night, to be honest with you. We've seen them go down that right side over and over and over again. Almost paid off that time. West Virginia looks like they're going to try it again. That lone Mountaineer goal scored in the 38th minute. First of the year from Rashawn Larmond. Bad time for a turnover. 
as we're midway through our second overtime period. Ball sent toward the near sideline. Stephen James will win it. And to Louis Thomas. Morris back for Thomas. Every Mountaineer on this side of the field. Morris notices. A good time switch there for Ryan Kellogg. Now it's back with Devarich. Four and a half to go in the game. Ball sent ahead. Rebound. Almost won by Kevin Morris. Andrew Rulo comes up and wins a hard challenge. Nice hustle there for the sophomore. Again, a transfer from the University of Charleston. Former U-20 player as well for Trinidad. Get a stoppage here as Kevin Rodriguez hampered by an injury. 4.15 to go. Yeah, one of Northern Illinois' best weapons heading to the bench now in Rodriguez. But, uh, you know, a goal is would really be uh, something else if Northern Illinois could pull it, pull it off. But uh, really just kind of controlling the ball if they can is all they want right now, I believe. Four minutes separating these two sides from a point in the MAC opener. Arslan on a cross attempt, lost his footing. Ball cleared all the way back to Devarich. James, strong ball ahead for Louis Thomas. Nice effort from Christian Molina to impede its progress. Throw in from Thomas, goes to Larmond. Now for Garcia Herreros. Back for Louis Thomas, he'll send a cross, almost on the goal. Andrew Rulo there, but Jedjic punches it away. And it'll be a corner kick, excuse me, a throw in for WVU. Approaching three minutes to go. Louis Thomas. Cross attempt, batted down. Clearance all the way back to Stephen James. Garcia Herreros posting up against Molina. Under three to go. Switching field, Jad Arslan will henter, uh, head one, excuse me, for Larmond. Morris plays wide now for Ryan Kellogg. The freshman Morris. Going to send it on. Louis Thomas was there. But a bit out of his reach, and it one hops its way into the hands of Conrad Jedjits. And Morris has had a couple of turnovers in the midfield here in this uh, second overtime, but a really good ball there. Louis Thomas almost gets to it, looking for that golden goal here. Entering two minutes left. West Virginia certainly pressing the aggressor here for the better part of both overtimes, even since, even before the uh, man advantage. And just can't crack this Northern Illinois defense right now. Under two to go. Garcia Herreros will send one in. Cleared out of the 18. Devarich with it for Kellogg. Morris. Swings near side. Sebastian Garcia Herreros. Morris ahead for Chad Arslan. Back for the freshman. Ryan Kellogg feeding it through. Rashawn Larmond sends it into the 18. Rulo had made a run on goal, was not home when the pass arrived. Down to 60 seconds in this Mid-American Conference opener for the Mountaineers. Pascal Devarich for Ryan Kellogg. 45 seconds to go as Kellogg 
Sends into the 18. Cleared away. James runs it down. Swings near sideline for Garcia Herreros for Louis Thomas. Give and go move. Garcia Herreros will give chase. Cannot keep it in as we're under 30 seconds to go. You would imagine one good opportunity remains, if that. Uh, keeper's going to take as long as he can to get this one away. It'll be really difficult to have any kind of chance after this. The goal kick won by WVU, headed back toward midfield, and this one will go in the books as a 1-1 draw. After an own goal from Nor uh, scored in favor of Northern Illinois, the Mountaineers respond with an equalizer in the 38th minute from Rashawn Larmond. This one goes to overtime, and in spite of a straight red card, five minutes into the first.